feel like an absolute pile of shit. I'm the head chef and co-owner of Rita's in Hackney on Mare Street. My name is Missy Flynn. I am co-owner of Rita's. I run the restaurant day to day um, and I also run the drink side of things. I didn't have any kind of formal training as it were. I lived in America for five years. Uh, I went to film school um, so I was living there with a student visa which obviously didn't allow me to get a proper job. I didn't do anything illegal or anything, but I just hung out in some kitchens with some guys. It's fine. But the food that I do is hugely influenced by my time in the States. We call it modern American comfort food because everyone needs a tagline, but it's a bit American, bit European, all great British produce, really, really good supplies. And we do fried chicken, which everyone talks about all the time. <laughs> it's really good. I worked mostly in like Mexican bars and restaurants. What I wanted to bring to Rita's was like a really fun, accessible cocktail menu. It kind of mirrors what the kitchen does in terms of like seasonality. Lots of agave spirits, so like tequilas and mezcals. Um, and I think that is the vibe of Rita's, is like fun, interesting party drinks. And missing from this uh, trio uh, is Dino, who is our head honcho, uh, big boss man. Papa. Papa. It was kind of Dino's idea. He, he was involved in birthdays, the bar in Dalston. We turned the old toilets behind the bar into a kitchen for two grand, which is insane. Originally, it was supposed to just be for a month to just look after the kitchen there as a pop up. And then we were there for a year. It was just standing behind a bar in Dalston throwing fried chicken at drunk kids. It which was really was fun. Loads of fun. When we first opened, it was really rough and ready. It was like all at the counter. You just get like cutlery in the middle of the table. And then I think people like wanted it to be more of a restaurant. So one day we just started setting the tables. The next day it was like you got water glasses on the table now. And now it's table service. And it just kind of evolved. And I think people wanted it to be like that. And it just made sense to like take it out of there and do it completely. We wanted someone's name, you know, so it feels like someone's place, like, a, you, like, a, like you're going over there to Thingy's house, you know. Someone suggested calling it Maggie's. I said, like, I'm not calling it Maggie's. And then Missy said Rita's, and we were like, yeah, Rita's. And she just sounds like a nice broad. Yeah. I haven't been out to eat anywhere for a while, so three or four in one night is going to be pretty good. I'm just going to prep up what we're going to eat when we come back so that I don't have to do too much. I'm going to prep some lamb shoulders. They're going to get braised all day and all evening while we're out. And when we come back to them later, all the meat's just going to come straight off the bone. Right. So that's that. Right. Easy, bro. What's up, dude? What's going on? <laughs> How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, it's Dino. What are we having then? A michelada with spice. It's based on lime and spices. And everyone's favourite hot sauce. She looks like she's been making Cholula for a while. Actually, she's quite cute. I'm coming for you, Cholula. Here you go. It's not a particularly attractive drink, is it? I think it looks gorgeous. This is our favourite drink. It's called a poop in the snow. Cheers. 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 Right, I'm done. You done? Get done. Sick. Deluxe. It's a Merc as well. German whip. Oh, with the blue leather. I like this look. Best school trip ever. <laughs> we got on the bus, um, headed over to Mangal. It's been there about 25 years, I think. There's a lot of fantastic Turkish food around here, but as far as we're concerned, that's where it's at. Special about Mango is being um, first Ojak Bashi restaurant in London, where you sit and dine next to the grill and open fire. The guys yesterday were amazing. Too. Yes. The way they look after you is the best too. Like it's not transactional. It's like you're in their space. We don't see it as a restaurant. We see it as our home. And you are my guest. Yeah, this guy basically is my dad. He's here nearly 24 years. But his English not that good because he had no time to go to school instead of cooking. Basically, he was cooking too much. 
it's uh, antique now. We're going to keep it for for next uh, 10, 15 years, hopefully. Yeah? Here's another one of these. Efez, classic, nice Turkish deliciousness. <laughs> I'm so Thank stoked you, for this. Uh, <laughs> this is exciting. Yes. I, I mean, it's an honor to be taken care of that well at Mango One, but to be given a Mango One t shirt is next level hospitality. Simply the best. Simply the best. We cook aubergine on the grill, red peppers and tomatoes, a little bit of salt, red pepper powder. Chopping it very fine, a bit of yogurt. We melt uh, the butter. And let's see what chef's gonna say. The, the little meze things that he did for us at the start, that super smoky grilled aubergine with the yogurt and that fresh tomato salad. Yeah. So good. I had a feeling when we got that that Arkham was gonna do a lot for us, but I didn't think it was gonna be that much. I mean, I've seen a mixed grill before, but the super mixed grill at Mango One is, is, is a pretty intense tower of meat. Ah, uh, fucking hell. Oh. Jeez, um, All Okabasi, it's just that amazing taste of like cooked over charcoal. Like anything cooked over charcoal, just delicious. All the bread like soaks up all that nice. Like, mm -hmm. It's like the best bit. Better than the steak, better than the meat, the juices. I think I'm gonna be more hungover with meat than I am with booze tomorrow. Pretty well with it. Sizable though. dent in it though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Come see us on Mare Street, yeah? Yeah. Come for oh. Thanks very much. Take care. Ladies first. We got back on the wagon and uh, headed over to Hillens Rock. It looks like a museum. A museum of meat. It's a really beautiful spot. They do something that other people don't do. To have a dedicated, really high quality butcher shop do a really, really high end product really well. And then at the end of the day of working as a butcher shop, they turn around and they say, this is how proud we are of our product. We cook it and we sell it. You can eat it here, come and have it. It's such a nice dinner setup as well. Yeah. Like, it's so cute in there. It's fun stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like wine. Yeah, okay. bottle, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. We sat down to have the biggest steak uh, I've ever had in my life, ever. 100%, ever. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. Oh, my days. So that's it raw? It's a little bit rare for me, I was yeah. going <laughs> That's getting huge. How do you like your steak? Rare? Rare. Rare? Yeah. Rare. Rare. Perfect. <laughs> Olive oil, salt and pepper. Been open nearly a year. Kind of brainchild out of Luca, really. And yeah, butchers in the day, quite old fashioned, deal with whole carcasses. So we have the whole animal, all the offal, skin and everything. So with real roots level, you know, make um, pork scratchings, all the terrines, pates, brawns, no wastage. Everything's free range, grass fed. Lovely quality stuff, very happy animals. As many of the ingredients as possible, veg wise, are English. Kind of follow some in house rules to keep the, the menu nice and simple and just try and do it justice in the kitchen. What the fuck? Just a little mid, mid evening snack. Uh, fucking A. It tasted like butter made of meat. So good. I thought the whole thing was banging. Like butter. This is insane, Luca. This is unbelievably good. My, my God. Oh. oh man, amazing. Thank you so much. This is just too much. My old flatmate turned up there to try and have a quiet dinner by himself, <laughs> but we decided to um, hijack him and take him with us. Uh, tonkatsu. Linda, pull it together. We're going to. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sober. What we're doing now is pulling ourselves together and handling our shit and not putting cigarettes backwards in our mouths. Hello, mate. I can't wait to go somewhere we can drink alcohol and eat some food. Are you right? Am I right? Am I right is what I meant. Are you right? You are right. Are you right? We are all right. We are all right. We are all right. <laughs> we 
We've had nothing to drink or eat. Okay. I assure you. Good. Well, come in. <laughs> Emma's my girl, one of the owners at Tonkotsu Ramen. Emma is somebody that I've got to know just by being like, hey, we just opened a restaurant in East London. I want to meet you. I need some help. Hang out with me, please. And she's like somebody who I lean on a lot for like just advice. And she's super fun as well. Tonkotsu is a ramen bar specialising in tonkotsu, which is a like, pork-based uh, ramen broth with their amazing uh, house-made noodles. I don't know if you saw the noodle machine in the back, but after all that meat last night, we just uh, we thought we'd just go and get some have? snacks. We had some uh, croquettes, uh, those crab balls. They're amazing, so they're like a kind of traditional croquetta, I guess, but with like loads of crab meat through, brown meat and white meat, and then really crispy on the outside, and served with really lovely sauce. And then we had some drinks, Japanese Bloody Mary. We had bulldog sauce in, uh, some soy sauce, a little bit of the pepper. I felt slightly drunk when I left here, pretty drunk when we left Mangal, warmed up when we got to Tonkotsu. Bloody Mary helped. Whoa. The next one... Did not help. Yeah, made me feel some type of way. <laughs> this is a sake bomb. So the idea is now that you might have a little tap on the table. The Marksman crew turned up, so Tom Harris, John Rotherham. We got just people that we really respect and admire to watch us smash a bunch of glasses. And so we grabbed everyone else, got on the giant white spaceship van with blue strip lighting. I feel like I'm in Quasar. Headed over to the Alibi and our favourite perfect dive bar. Went in and watched the riddles play. Riddles are a band fronted by Jimmy. I don't know his last name, because his last name is always whatever the band that he's in. So he's currently called Jimmy Riddle. I stood around kind of doing that for a bit, but I felt a bit sick. I didn't have as much hair as everyone else, so I can't really headbang. Everyone was there, picked them up, threw them on the super bus and uh, headed over here to get me to cook some food. <laughs> I was feeling a little bit ropey, but I have a little bit of a thing and when I walk into the kitchen, I just kind of sober up a little bit. This is all delicious. You know about delicious? Is this is delicious. So this is the lamb that we put in today. We were early in the bath with all this delicious like oregano, nice chipotle chilies, old plum. Lamb's on. So there's a lot of like sugars in there. We got the agave, we got all the sweets from the raisins and everything. And I just want to caramelize some of those sugars that I've been braising, the pineapple juice and everything. I feel like Nigella right now. She never did this. She never did this! And then this, this is the beauty, this is the wild garlic crema. So it's, uh, it's an emulsion made with uh, our housemate mayonnaise, lots of black pepper, wild garlic, and then finish with buttermilk. Ah, oh, fuck, this smells so good. So good. Oh, this is delicious. Who's hungry? Come and get some food. Wait, let me, let me put these on the plate for the big dog. Big dog's getting a plate. Big dog. Luca!
the ethos behind what we do is to put ourselves on a plate and in a glass and in a fun place and uh, not be too fancy or over the top and just be a nice neighborhood restaurant somewhere where people in the neighborhood want to come and hang out. That's it. That's great. Cool. Can I go and get some chips? <laughs> Are you actually getting chips? Yes. <laughs> do, do you want some? <laughs> no.